Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for uh, being out here with us today. Uh, we know that uh, uh, you know as the the weeks tend to go on, we're on day three of the summit, and uh, the, the the nights tend to get a little bit longer. The mornings get a little bit more difficult. So we're happy everybody could make it out here. We have this big room to fill, so plenty of seats. So we're excited to be here today to talk a little about Watcher. Uh, I'm Joe Cropper from IBM, Suzanne Ball from Intel, Gina Meal uh, from Bcom. And we want to talk a little bit about the resource optimization service uh, for OpenStack. Uh, we're very excited to be here. We want to give you a rundown sort of of what are some of the key features and goals and initiatives of Watcher, where have we been in the past from a historical standpoint, and where do we see this project going in the future in terms of, you know, what do we accomplish in the Newton, and where do we see again going in Okada. <clears throat> also shown on here is the OpenStack logo, uh, known as the jellyfish for the Watcher project. For those of you that may be wondering, well, what does a jellyfish have to do with resource optimization? Uh, the jellyfish is actually the most energy efficient uh, swimmer of all animals. And so we thought that that was a good pairing of data center optimization and whatnot. And if you want to read more about the anatomy of that, Wikipedia has a lot of good information. I don't pretend to understand all of that. <clears throat> so what is Watcher? Watcher is a flexible resource optimization service for OpenStack clouds. We all know that um, you know, OpenStack has done a good job in terms of when you're getting ready to place a, a virtual machine initially, uh, put it out in the cloud, you know, we use the Nova scheduler. That handles initial placement. Well, what happens over time is that clouds tend to become imbalanced. So you put a workload out there initially, and you've got, you know, hundreds of compute nodes, and over time, resource utilization can sort of, you know, very greatly differ. Um, you know, workloads start to spin up, become very busy, other hosts may be idle. And so how can we better optimize our environment? So de de dependent on, uh, you know, do you want to do uh, balanced terms of CPU utilization, memory utilization, energy sort of awareness? There's many different optimization strategies that you can do. And there's many commercial offerings that do this. Um, I'm sure many folks are familiar with VMware DRS. You know, it's, you know, we're looking at trying to bring similar technologies into open source economies uh, like OpenStack. Um, in addition to providing several out-of-box optimization strategies, one of the things that we want to try to accomplish is provide a flexible framework. So we realize that many different cloud providers, uh, people whether you're running a private cloud, public cloud, uh, you know, there's probably different ways that you may want to optimize your infrastructure. And so one of the things with Watcher is we want to have a nice framework that's flexible so that you could plug in your own custom optimization schemes. So if you wanted to have some proprietary things, that's perfectly fine. You can use Watcher for sort of that overall optimization framework. So <clears throat> it also can integrate with other external engines as well. And Suzanne will talk a little bit about this later, but there's some nice plug points so that uh, through your optimization routine, if you want to call out to other, uh, we, we use the term scoring modules, there's ways, again, nice interfaces that you can tie into some of these systems. So again, think of Watcher, out-of-box value that's being provided, several uh, uh, optimization schemes that you can use, but again, flexible and powerful so that you can fit uh, your own routines in there as well. So one of the other things we're very excited with Watcher is that um, you know, we have many contributors from all over the globe. In fact, by definition, when, when you know, we, I, I, I was excited to you know, learn about Watcher uh, from the folks here at BCom uh, back in the Vancouver Summit. And so you know, it was started by, uh, by their team uh, based out of France. They did a lot of great work. And you know, uh, IBM and Intel, we, we joined, wanted to try to help. And there's many, many other companies. Uh, Walmart has since joined, you know, Servionica. I mean, many, many folks here up on the screen, ZTE. And, and it's a global, it's really a global team. And that's great. We're getting a lot of interesting perspectives from all over the place. Uh, and so the team, you know, uh, very diverse in nature. We have a lot of new ideas uh, from, from many different uh, uh, backgrounds. So hopefully, um, you know, we're always uh, welcoming more people. We're very excited. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're out on IRC, and we'd be happy to have an, uh, additional folks come in and join us. But again, a very diverse set of, of, of uh, contributors, and that's been very exciting to be a part of. So a little bit about some of the key features, and we sort of touched on this a little bit, but one of the things that was with some of the out-of-box optimization routines that we provide is uh, uh, one of the approaches is VM live migration. So for instance, uh, as different uh, hosts become uh, very utilized, I have a whole bunch of workloads on host A. I need to get them over to host B. How do I solve that problem? I can invoke VM live migration. So most hypervisors in the OpenStack ecosystem support this operation. We can invoke that um, and, and to try to rebalance uh, the cloud. Um, 
again, a very, very flexible uh, uh, infrastructure. So if there's other sorts of operations that you would want to plug in, again, VM uh, migration is just one example. You could also power cycle compute nodes, for example, via Ironic. Uh, maybe you want to eventually do uh, right sizing of a virtual machine, you know, shrink it down, grow it up. Uh, there's many, many different ways depending on what your overall optimizations goals are. And again, Watcher provides that good, that nice flexible framework to tie those in. Um, there's also two modes in which Watcher can run that's very useful. So there's sort of what we call a, a, a one-time execution mode, or sometimes called one, uh, one-shot execution, and that's the first uh, mode there, single mode, where maybe as a cloud administrator you want to run one optimization loop. You can go ahead and run that just one time, and that's sort of an on-demand uh, 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 sort of execution mode. There's also a continuous mode where I want my audits to be running continuously in the background, so it's very asynchronous. Think of it like a disk defragmentation process. It's always running silently. You don't really recognize it. It's just happening in the background. So we expect that probably most users of this would end up going down that, that ladder path. Uh, that's the way a lot of some of the commercial technologies work, but again, you have that flexibility in terms of how you want to run Watcher. So how does Watcher tie into the rest of the OpenStack ecosystem? Uh, that's one of the th key things that we kind of want to try to make sure that people understand here is that think of it kind of like a hub and spoke model where you have Watcher in the center and it's leveraging the other projects and in, in, in the services that they provide. So a perfect example is when we want to optimize the data center and I need to invoke VM live migration, right? Watcher doesn't go off and orchestrate that or, or, or rather doesn't implement that itself. It rather delegates that work off to Nova, which has already done that and tackled that problem. So we're going to leverage the services provided by Nova uh, to do migration. Um, for in terms of gathering metrics, right? There's Solometer, Minasca, some of these other projects that are already doing that. Watcher is not metrics collection. We instead delegate that work off uh, to, to those projects. Um, of course, Keystone would handle all the authentication. We have Oslo for all the common libraries and routines. So again, depending on how you want to optimize the service, you could call out to any of these other sorts of other projects. Again, if you wanted to start doing bare metal operations, you would, you would tie into Ironic. So that's sort of the relationship between Watcher with respect to the rest of the OpenStack ecosystem is we want to leverage those services to optimize the environment in whatever way may make sense for your data centers. Um, and at the end of the day, right, this is enabling some new ways to reduce your TCO, and, and that can really be defined as, you know, some, some people are looking to get the most uh, maybe energy efficient data centers. So that may be one way to reduce your TCO. Other folks maybe want to be getting, uh, you know, getting the most work done. You know, maybe your, your, your TCO is defined by your, your memory utilization. So there's many different goals that you're trying to achieve. And at the end of the day, as those dynamic clouds and, and resources, you know, change over time, uh, again, the idea of Watcher is to come in and every time an optimization loops run, things are in better, better condition than they were before, okay? So this slide sort of talks about the overall optimization loop. And so um, you know, if you were to take a step back outside of the code for a minute, this is sort of the high-level processes that we're trying to cover with Watcher. And I like to start down at the bottom of this loop in the monitoring uh, uh, component. So this is the phase where all of the metrics are collected into the system. Again, this is happening asynchronously, as I talked about. This is coming in uh, from Solometer. Uh, or, or Minasca. Again, you could plug in other metric systems if you wanted as well, but the data is coming in. Then the next phase in the optimization loop, we move into the analysis phase. So this is something that, again, this is a very theoretical picture. We admittedly in Watcher, we need to continue to work on this part of, 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 the, of, the, of the loop. But in theory, one of the things that we would do here is data aggregation. So we would be looking at a lot of the information coming in from the metric systems, start aggregating information. You know, maybe you have very granular metrics and you want to sort of you know, summarize those or aggregate them down into sort of a time series format uh, to sort of reduce the overall data. So this is where the data aggregation uh, would occur is in the, uh, the analyze phase. And we have another phase called the profiling phase. So this is perhaps where you're starting to, you can tie into some other analytic systems. Again, Suzanne will touch on this. We, we, uh, we did a lot of work on this, uh, this piece in this uh, Newton release. But where you could start hooking into a, a, another system, profile data, uh, perhaps identify trends or future predictions as to, uh, I, I look at all these metrics, what, what might the past tell me about the future? So you could profile uh, your, your information. That all feeds into the optimization process. So this is where, okay, I've 
I've sort of, uh, I understand the landscape of my data center. Now I want to try to optimize it. And the input to the optimizer is a number of different uh, uh, pieces of information, such as constraints. Maybe there are certain virtual machines that need to be co-located or anti-co-located. Uh, what is my overall objective? Again, do I want to pack up a certain host and fill it up with VMs, or do I want to redistribute my VMs based on, again, CPU or memory utilization, or maybe some combination there? So the optimizer is ultimately deciding what steps need to be taken to improve my, my data center. And then that feeds into the planning phase, and the planner is ultimately figuring out, okay, here's all the, for instance, migrations that need to happen. The planner is sort of putting together, think of it kind of like a graph. Um, you know, maybe certain operations, certain migrations can occur in, in parallel, maybe some need to run serially. Uh, so it's putting together sort of the master plan of how I can get my data center from, you know, state A to state B, and state B being better or, or more efficient than the initial state. And then the last piece of that is the applier. So this is where all of the plan has been put together. Now I need to go ahead and execute that plan and turn it into reality. And, and again, this is a, 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 think of it like a loop that will run continuously over. And again, the idea is that every time this loop runs, things are more effective than they were previously. Um, so it's a very, very important thing to realize that just because you run this one time doesn't mean it's perfect and it's gonna remain perfect. It's rather a very uh, continuous uh, sort of uh, set of steps that we expect to need to happen. So this next chart here talks a little bit about the overall architecture of Watcher. And there's some very common things with respect to some other services in OpenStack. So for instance, you have a Watcher API process. You were leveraging the OpenStack message bus. So again, very, very similar uh, to, to other projects. And I try to put some numbers on here to kind of help sort of follow it. So if you look in the lower left-hand corner, this is where we have the metrics collection occurring. So this is, again, as I talked about, where we have Solometer, Manaska could be used, you know, mutually exclusive, one or the other. That information then feeds into, we've got a clustered data model, and this is sort of an in-memory representation. That was something that was done here in this release that can be uh, updated, maintained, uh, that the optimization process can ultimately leverage to, again, to query this current state of the system. Um, step two, or the, 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 really the second component here, is where the administrator starts to interact with Watcher. So as an admin, I have a CLI interface. So if you look in the upper left-hand corner, um, it also ties into the OpenStack CLI. Uh, uh, so it's OpenStack Optimize that calls into the Watcher CLIs. I can run my, I can run my audits and optimization processes there. Um, there's also a Horizon plugin, uh, and all of these will flow into, when you make that request, it'll flow into the Watcher API, uh, so it's sort of in the, in the uh, mid-center there. Uh, the Watcher API and then, of course, can delegate that work off to some of the other components. So, for instance, uh, 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 number three, this is where you have sort of the overall optimization or optimizer for Watcher. This is where the sort of the planner lives that we talked about on the previous optimization loop. This is the component that is actually making the decisions about, you know, what, uh, what steps need to be taken to optimize the data center. And that uh, number four is, is le leveraging the cluster data model to ultimately figure out, okay, what does the state of my cloud look like, what VMs are on what hosts, so on and so forth. It leverages all that information to make its decisions. <clears throat> and then number five, we've got the watcher action applier. So this is, again, that, that component that is, is taking all the information, uh, applying everything, and that leverages up in the upper right-hand corner uh, the components in box six. So this is where you would call out to some of the other services in the ecosystem. Um, so well, again, whether you're doing uh, uh, migrations, you would be leveraging the Nova service for that. Um, eventually, we want to tie into Neutron and Cinder. Um, so the, the dotted lines represent there are more of, that's a future set of actions we would like to take. You know, there's a number of optimizations you may take to optimize your network, maybe your QoS settings, uh, different uh, what, what, what volumes are attached to which host. There's a number of things that we could do there longer term. So that's kind of how, how this uh, uh, fits together. So, um, the next uh, chart I would like to turn over to Suzanne to talk a little bit about the Watcher history, the roadmap, you know, what we accomplished in Newton, and where we see ourselves going in Okada. Suzanne? Uh, thank you. So um, I'm quickly going to go over, as uh, Joe said, the, the Watcher history and where we're going. So um, the first time I heard about uh, Watcher was at the Vancouver um, summit where Beacom presented it, and like Joe mentioned earlier, IBM and Intel were very interested in this project. So in September 
2015, we kind of had a formal meeting over at, at Beepcom, and that's when we kind of kicked off the initiative. Um, at that point, we were really focusing on making sure that, at least from an Intel perspective, making sure we brought in a, a small amount of um, what I would call strategies, even though simple, that still would allow us to actually test the infrastructure and make sure that the infrastructure could handle some of the optimization that we were looking for. And I think at this point, now that we are in October 16th, the infrastructure is actually at a very good state. And so one of the things that we're looking for is more um, strategies, people contributing more strategies so that um, it's becoming more and more useful for the community. One of the things that, kind of a, a big thing that happened since we met last time in Austin that is that we're now an official project. On May 31st, we became part of the OpenStack Big Tent. Yes. <laughs> Thanks to everybody. <laughs> And yes, and so thank you for every, everybody for uh, participating and doing this. Uh, so it, one of the things I'm going to quick or to talk about over the next 10 minutes is really all the great work we did for, in the Newton release and you know how far we've come since uh, even we, were, we became part of the big tent. And uh, Jean-Emile is going to talk about our plans for the Okata release. So if we look at some of the, uh, the accomplishment for the Newton, Newton cycle, one of the things that um, was of, re of a lot of interest uh, for at least Intel is, was the watcher scoring module. So the way it is today, uh, you know, you, we, we want to achieve some goals. We've implemented some strategies, and those are part of the plugins that are within watcher. But a lot of the data scientists are going to work on a different set of tools that are kind of part of an external framework. And so the idea here was to integrate with uh, external scoring engines so that we can take those into account when we actually um, execute strategies and try to achieve goals. And, and I'll quickly go over this uh, in a couple more slides just to give you a better visual idea of what we, how this actually works. The other thing that we've accomplished is uh, we added the active mode. Um, so as Joe mentioned earlier, it, um, the way that it, it had been up until Newton was that the admin would trigger manually an audit and get an action plan and then would have to um, kind of carry that out by hand. Uh, the way we have it now is that we have this notion of continuous audit, so the cloud is actually can now continuously be audited as well as uh, you know, action plan being automatically being carried out. And while we still, we, I think it's important that we still have both modes and that not everybody is going to want all actions to be um, carried out automatically. And also uh, looking at, you know, from an Intel perspective, the way our admin works work is that they kind of need to trust the system before they're going to let you do anything, do some, automatic um, migration. And, and so this is why we, we kind of have those two modes. And eventually the way I envision this is that, you know, some of the easy tasks, kind of no-brainer tasks, people are going to uh, just say, yes, please carry those out, you know, automatically without me re approving them. Uh, moving one of your bigger applications around, you, you are going to want to make sure that it, it really pays off before you want to do that. And so I see really both modes being very valuable. So actually getting back to um, the value of you know, the action plan or uh, of your optimization, one of the things that was added into a watcher this time is this notion of effect, if, efficacy indicator. And w what that really means is that when you, create, when you have a strategy uh, the strategy writer can actually put in this, the notion of what is the type of efficiency that a certain thing is going to give him or her. And uh, just as an example, uh, and, and what this is actually giving you is when you, you run an audit and you get an action plan back, you can actually see what are the actions and what is the efficiency that you're going to gain by applying this action plan. So it kind of motivates the admin to want to carry out an action plan. If you don't know what your 
um, optimization gives you, there is really no reason to really think you're going to get anything in, out of it. And I was just talking to some member of the Watcher team. Uh, we've been running some um, scalability tests that, uh, on, on an Intel cluster with uh, like 25 compute nodes. And as we ran that, uh, we ended up creating 177 VMs, migrating them around so that uh, we suddenly got 23 out of the 24 nodes free. And it had a, an efficiency indicator that would kind of show that it, this was worth doing. Um, uh, uh, one of the other things that we've been focusing on, and I, I was telling you this earlier, was um, around a more value-added optimization strategy. And I, I have a slide where we kind of list some of the things that we've added for Newton. Uh, some of the other things that kind of core features we've added to Watcher that might be kind of less obvious to the user but uh, good in terms of uh, efficiency and performance is uh, a local cluster state model. Uh, and what we've done here is we've created that in memory and where before it was actually created for each audit, here it's actually in memory and being updated from specific services as needed. And the last thing is, um, you know, uh, one of the things uh, that we, we've been doing is scalability tests. So 30 node doesn't sound like that much, but it, it, there is a big difference between running between on five and then 30. And so it's one step. One of the, the things we're going to also look at is um, through the, o o through uh, kind of the open uh, compute initiative, uh, we can get a larger cluster and we've uh, actually submitted a request for even a larger cluster. So a lot of us uh, are trying to st getting re be ready to uh, run water in production. And so we do want to be able to make sure it scale to a decent size. So these are the strategy we currently have in Watcher. And again, this is very pluggable. So anybody who wants to contribute their own strategy are more than welcome to do that. And, and uh, like Jean-Emile mentioned yesterday, not all strategies have to be open sourced. We, we do have customers or, that are doing strategies and then just keeping them um, you know, for themselves and not open sourcing them. We, we just think it's important that at least Watcher has a, a base of uh, strategies that allows you to get value out of Watcher uh, as, you know, pretty much out of the box. So as you can see, um, there is many com companies have contributed to the strategies and, and uh, it range everything from like uh, looking at server outlet temperature and doing threshold uh, migra uh, VM migration to uh, basic consolidation and uh, workflow stabilization around uh, VMs. And so I won't go over each of them. You can uh, read them or, and they're also on the blueprint. But uh, one of the things that, you know, is interesting is that, and I think that's one of the powerful things about Watcher is uh, I really look at it as an orchestrator with, with a data analytics engine. And so uh, as you're looking at, you know, so you can actually have, as we move forward, we're also looking at maybe having more of a um, data analytics stack in there so that we can do clustering and um, classification right there real time uh, around the fingerprinting of some of the workloads so that we can do better placement and also measure a contention of workloads. So th this is one of the things that uh, I personally thought was very cool and I wanted to highlight here is that um, we have uh, people who are actually part of the Watcher team, you know, writing blogs about how, how their contributions uh, are making a change in their uh, environments. And, and so I, this is, I think, the first blog I've seen of uh, somebody who, who actually um, have been using OpenStack Watcher with their uh, specific plugin and um, showing that they, in this case, they actually have a more efficient deployment. And so, you know, this is also for all the Watcher participants. This, this is great for us because, you know, the more we talk about Watcher, the, the better, um, the more people 
uh, learn about it and, and are aware of it, our existence. So going back to uh, the watcher scoring module. So one of the things uh, we were talking about earlier is that in many cases, and maybe I'll just go to this one first and come back. So if you look at where watcher fits in the ecosystem, it's really um, kind of optimizing an OpenStack cloud based on uh, strategies that are implemented. And it, up until today, they were really part of Watcher themselves. One of the things, so the trusted analytic platform, and, and the, this is not, a, you know, this is just an example of an implementation. It could be a different uh, external uh, service, um, but its scoring engine can be published into uh, the Watcher scoring module, and then, um, and then it, it's kind of being used just as any other strategy. And what, what we created here was kind of um, a nice uh, tie with external analytics platforms through uh, well-defined APIs. And the reason we thought this was a very interesting uh, use case is really because um, we wanted the data scientist to not have to touch the cloud. And we wanted the uh, admin of the OpenStack cloud to not have to understand what a plugin ha is doing or what needs to be done in order to integrate a plugin. The other thing that this is giving us is really, how do I do the little bread thing? Go and right here. There's a button right here. Oh yeah. Uh, so might not work. Okay. So uh, and uh, so one of the things was really about keeping the data scientist. Um, working with a tool that he or she is really good at and uh, letting the, the administrator be, feel safe that nobody was actually touching or messing with their cloud. The other thing that this allows us to do in this case is actually uh, having the model be trained uh, and, you know, and learn outside the OpenStack ecosystem and close to real time publish uh, the scoring engine into the cloud and it would take action. If I go back here. So going back to this, like I said, the, the scoring engine is really what we would call kind of a generic machine learning service and it has a standard API to interact with uh, any uh, external analytics service. In the case of a TAP, which is uh, open source as well, and is an effort that is led by Intel, but hopefully more uh, people are going to start contributing, uh, we just focus uh, as that as our first example, since uh, we uh, knew of, you know, we had uh, experience with both TAP and, and the Watcher piece. Thanks, and I will, Thanks, I will pass it on to Joaimil. So what are the plans for the Okata release? So first of all, we want to work on the audit scope. So right now, when we perform an audit, this is done on the whole infrastructure. And sometimes, depending on what you want to optimize, this is better to just scope the optimization on something. For example, we would like to be able to optimize an availability zone or a no aggregates. On some time, we just want to focus on storage. Sometimes, we just want to focus on network. So the idea behind Audiscope is just to be able to scope the audit on some resources available in OpenStack. And some things that we are looking for is to improve action plan storage in Watcher. So in the Watcher app layer, we are using a workflow engine called TaskFlow. And we want to leverage concurrent actions of TaskFlow in order to be able to migrate several, action, several virtual machines at a time. Because uh, in the Watcher Planner, for now, we are able to schedule um, several actions at a time, but we cannot store this information in the current database. So we want to be able to, to do that for many reasons, for performance reasons, for security reasons, and so on. And the other thing that we want to work, it's a graph-based cluster models. So right now, we are using a flat structure of the infrastructure. This means that uh, we cannot, uh, for example, modelize in efficiently network topology. And sometimes we want to work on uh, optimizations like have many links between services. So the idea behind cluster-based cluster model is to be able to 
uh, modelate network topology on, on so on. And according to the, what we want to optimize, this is the best thing to, to use. Another thing that we want to do in Okata release is to add workload characterizations. Quality of service is something that matters a lot for us and for many of uh, the customers that we have. And one way to understand how the virtual machines are using the resources is to use workload fingerprinting or workload characterizations. Know, the, know how the virtual machines are using the resources allow us to, for example, proactively load balance the loads. But we can think for many other use, use cases. Use notification in Watcher. So right now, when we perform an edit, this is done um, on any other open stack components are not aware of that. And for example, Watcher itself wants to be aware that we are applying an action plan to the systems. And for example, Nova wants to know that we are doing some things. So we want to let the other open stack component to react to some uh, events in a fashion, uh, event fashion uh, way. As we say uh, many times, we want to add uh, many new strategies. One of the key features of Watcher is its pluggable architecture. This means that if you, are, uh, if you have some optimization problems, we think that Watcher is the best place to do, the, to do all that. We, try to prov we provide everything you need to f just focus on your optimization problems. So, so if you have an opti optimization problems and you want to work with us, we will really be happy to, to help you. <laughs> So this is a strategy that we plan to add in the Okata release. So first of all, Walmart and Intel want to work on to use fingerprinting in order to guarantee uh, service level objectives. So the idea behind that is to some of the workloads that we are running in the infrastructure are critical for the business. Or some of them are less important. We can imagine, for example, some continuous integration jobs that can uh, um, not are not critical and we can kill them in order to guarantee the service of uh, critical systems. Another thing that we want to add in the OCA theories is to work on uh, with ZTI about um, elastic extension of strategy. Sometimes, uh, strategy, so flavor, sorry. Sometimes when you choose uh, initially the flavor, uh, this is not uh, well choose and we want to be able to add, for example, some uh, vCPU or RAM to guarantee the service. So, uh, thank you very much for, for, for listening to us. We have a wiki with uh, many documentations. For example, it will uh, explain very well how to design your own strategy. We have an ERC meeting every Wednesday. And if you want to see Watcher in action, we have a, a, a video online. Cool. Yeah. Thank hey. you. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you. <laughs> We have a mic, maybe. Oh. Is there a mic? Maybe we can give him maybe right up here. If you ask your question, we'll repeat it. Yeah, we'll it. repeat it. That's fine. So oh. I've seen a lot of presentations this week about self-tailing networks. And that's why we changed the environment to different types of jobs and then different actions. And the reason why it works is it's a bar on the So how would you characterize Watcher versus some of those other solutions in the sense that they have some of the same traits as the job that you're doing? I mean, yeah, I could take us. So I think the, the question was maybe is there some other projects that are doing with respect to self-healing networks and maybe you know doing some of those sorts of operations and how uh, how does Watcher sort of tie into some of those? So that's that's a really interesting question because you know when you talk about uh, you know again you know the, the the whole idea with Watcher is providing this generic framework and I guess this is my take and others can feel free to add to this but. It provides a nice framework for optimization, and the, the the types of optimizations you may be doing may be, you know, right now they're mostly compute centric. So we're starting around, for for instance, CPU utilization and balancing, or or having workloads that are sort of packed up on a host, or doing round robin sort of deployments. Eventually, with how, how Watcher, if you remember back to one of the architectural pictures I showed, you could tie this and and, and link it into Neutron or Cinder or some of these other things. So it's, I see this as really providing a much broader scope in terms of where some of these other projects may focus on very specific sorts of, uh, of things that are relevant to maybe their project only. And again, depending on how, you know, you, if you look at your overall data center, there could be a number of different ways in which you're trying to optimize that. And again, I see Watcher as sort of a nice, uh, uh, you know, utility or service you could start running that, again, has these generic out-of-box uh, routines then, or, and, or, and others could then 
plug in their own implementations. And I think that um, you know we're, we're again you know it's I guess the the, the the short answer to the question is a very broad uh, you know the, the watcher uh, system can be very broadly defined, whereas again some of the other ones are maybe a little bit more specific. I don't know, Suzanne or Jimmy, anybody want to add to that? So we're coming at Watcher from uh, the workload uh, kind of optimization. And, and uh, you know, for example, fingerprinting of the application with phases and trends, being able to predict as I'm launching my next app, is there be going to be contention with existing apps? That's really where I see Watcher. Uh, I don't say that, uh, you know, self-healing networks. Uh, I, is anywhere in, in that category. And, mm -hmm. and you know, self-healing networks is, to me, what I would call a niche. You know, it's kind of a smaller piece. But it, I'm really looking at you know, how do I increase the, my, the utilization of my overall cloud from, let's say, the 20% server CPU utilization to you know, 50 or more towards um, the same type of uh, utilization as the large uh, service providers are getting, just because they have a, a much bigger mix of workload than customers. In my opinion, many other projects are rule-based on what you is more about uh, analytic models. For example, you have an application, we will learn the basement of the application, how it works usually, and after, when we learn how this, this application is working, we will say, okay, uh, now we see that, uh, that compared to the history, this fit machine are not the same behavior, and you can learn that you have to, to think about like mm -hmm. the fingerprinting or many other projects as, okay, if this virtual machine is above this threshold, do that. And we have more learning uh, ways to, to do the thing. Right. Yeah, the, the overall yeah. framework, right. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Any other questions? Yeah. Um, can you run the latest watch build in all the versions of OpenStack? Yes. Is there, is there any obvious version that it could work with? <coughs> so, I mean, I mean, th I think the question was about running watch with all the versions of OpenStack, or what is the, you know, What's what, what levels does it support? I think it's a Mitaka. Okay. So, yeah, Mitaka, I mean, a lot of the kind of, you know, we, we really went under heavy development back in Mitaka, and then obviously now with, with Newton, um, you know, that's where we would really recommend that people start, it would be with the current release. In the Watcher configuration file, you can specify what is the current version of Keystone, so you, you can adapt. Anything else? No? Yeah, sure. So is it, sorry, was the question just to, can this <clears throat> be used for initial VM placement? So, so, yeah, so that's a great question. So um, again, can the ver can Watcher be used for the initial placement of the VM? And, and the short answer is, is really no. In fact, we're looking at, I mean, that's what the Nova scheduler does when you initially place it. And that would continue to, to, to be so in the future, or you know, down the road. And what we want to use Watcher for is that, you know, really post VM deployment sort of uh, optimization process. You also have to think that when you know you look at the workloads in the cloud, you're going to have long-running jobs and short-lived jobs. So even though it looks like you have the optimal initial placement, over time suddenly you end up with a lot of fragmentation. And we're focusing on kind of the fragmentation and making sure that uh, we optimize the cloud as it's running given that we feel currently that that's something that's missing. And we need time to learn how the virtual machine is running, so <coughs> if it's less. All right, anything else? All right. Cool, thank well, you very thank much. You very thank much. you so much. Join us on IRC if you're interested. Yeah. <coughs> Appreciate it. <coughs>